My name is Chris Blick, I'm a consultant urologist, and one of the areas I'm particularly interested in is trials looking at different ways of investigating and treating kidney cancer. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the role of biopsy and surveillance in kidney cancer today. There are a number of reasons we may use renal biopsies in kidney cancer. First of all, if a, a tumor on a kidney is indeterminate and we need some more information, uh, we may use biopsies prior to what we call ablative therapy. So if we have a tissue diagnosis before we proceed for that. We may also use kidney biopsy prior to active surveillance of renal masses. And also in patients with more advanced disease, kidney biopsies can provide information which may then determine what form of treatment may be most appropriate for them. With regards to kidney biopsies, they have a very high diagnostic accuracy of over 95%. Um, but one of the issues with kidney biopsies is that we may um, often get results which are undiagnostic. So um, the sample may not provide us with the information we need in about 10 to 20% of cases. The role of renal biopsies is fairly well defined and therefore trials for renal biopsy aren't necessarily the future of, of, of research. What is really interesting is the evolving research looking at new imaging technologies, which may help avoid biopsies in the future. Currently, we are able to see tumors on CT scans or MRIs, but we may not be able to characterize these and predict whether they're aggressive tumors or indeed what subtype of kidney cancer they may be. So there are new technologies such as radio-labeled pharmaceutical agents, which may provide the answer to this without the need for biopsies. There are there's the use of artificial intelligence and also PET CT imaging, which I believe over the next few years will become an area of, of real interest and may actually improve the way that we diagnose and treat patients with kidney cancer. So the majority of kidney tumors are picked up incidentally, particularly when they're smaller tumors. So almost 60% of smaller renal tumors are picked up via scans for completely different reasons. So patients may attend their GP for, with abdominal pain and end up having an ultrasound or a CT scan, and these are identified that way. Even in patients with more advanced kidney tumors, um, a third of those will be picked up incidentally. Um, and the classical symptoms of pain around the back, blood in the urine, or feeling a, a swollen or a mass in the abdomen are quite rare these days. It's rare for kidney tumors to be missed on imaging. Um, unless they're incredibly small, less than a centimetre in diameter, and the scan's being carried out for a, a different reason, then they may be missed, but it is very rare for them to be missed. With regards to misdiagnosed, well, there are certain characteristics of kidney tumours which we see on ultrasound or CT, which increases our suspicion that they may be, they may be malignant. Um, if we are to diagnose kidney tumours through biopsy, then the um, the false positive rate or the, you know, the failure of a, a biopsy to provide accuracy is very low indeed. So misdiagnosis is quite rare. There are certain tumours that we see on CT, which it may be very difficult to differentiate between what is a benign non-cancerous tumour or a malignant or cancerous tumour. Um, and when we're considering treatment, we do bear this in mind. As mentioned before, I think technology will allow us to increase our ability to diagnose what are more aggressive tumours versus those which may be either benign or less aggressive to help us determine which treatment may be appropriate for each, for each patient. So I think the use of artificial intelligence, the improvements in imaging technology, and also the, the use of um, labelled um, rate, pharmaceutical agents may um, enable us to be more accurate with our um, pre-surgical or diagnostic accuracy. So for patients with localised kidney tumours, um, they may be offered active surveillance depending on their age, the size of the tumour and also their comorbidities. If patients decide to have active treatment, then there are a few options, including focal treatment, um, which may be using radiofrequency waves, maybe using something called cryotherapy. 
Um, the other options include surgical resection or removal of the tumour, which may involve just removing part of the tumour, a uh, part of the kidney, sorry, or the entire kidney. For patients who have kidney cancer, which has spread beyond the kidney, then there are um, immunotherapy options, which may be combined with what we call targeted treatments. Um, but really the decision on what options are available very much deter is determined by the stage of the tumour. There's no direct link between kidney tumours and prostate cancer. Um, there is a certain type of kidney cancer called transitional cell cancer, which is a very similar type to that associated with bladder cancers. And therefore, essentially, this is a cancer of the lining of the, the urethelium or the urinary tract, which is consistent in both organs. So there is a link between that type of kidney cancer and bladder cancer. <laughs> 